Python is a go-to programming language if you are venturing into AI. In Python, there is a very interesting library called Pandas, which is used for data manipulation of analysis. And it supports data manipulation and analysis by two of its key features. One is data frame, other is sales. Now in this quick reference cheat sheet that I've created for Pandas, I'm going to cover how to work with files as a first milestone, second, manipulating columns, number three, missing value treatment, number four, aggregating data, number five, sorting, number six, column transformation, and number seven, selecting and indexing. Now I'm going to take you through this, through the quick reference cheat sheet that I've created on, on my Jupyter Notebook. Now, if you are looking for data manipulation and analysis, then Pandas is your library because of the two features which I've just mentioned. Number one, data frame, number two, series. Now, my name is Shubhradeep, I'm the author. I represent the organization called AI430, and all of this code is free that you're going to see, which is part of this cheat sheet. And you can go to my repo, which is github.com, AI430 free code, and download this file. If you're looking for mentorship, you can click the next link. So let's get started. Working with files. So very simple, you have pd.read underscore csv. And if you want to read an Excel, you say read underscore Excel. Let's quickly see an example. Sample. So you can create you can create a data in this particular format and then say pd.data frame that will ensure the data is in the form of a data frame. And then you can use either of these two. So first I'm going to use the data frame and uh, create a CSV file out of it, and then I'm going to read this CSV file. So you can do both CSV and Excel by just switching from read CSV to read Excel. So we move to the next. Next is manipulating columns. In manipulating columns, you can drop a set of columns. You can change the column type to, so let's say the column age is in string format or object format, you can convert it into end. You can rename the column from one particular value to the other value. We'll quickly see an example. So here, as you can see, I have this particular data converted into a data frame. And in this data frame, there is an unnamed zero, which is nothing but the index, which automatically is created using pandas. So I'm going to drop that. Next, what I'm trying to do here is that age, year, score, profit, all of them I'm converting to int. And then I'm renaming the column score to outcome. And now I can see that my column score has become outcome. Okay, so this is great. My next step is missing value treatment. So here, if I have nan or not a number values, then all I can do is that I can drop all of them. So if some of the values, for example, in age is not a number, I can drop them. Similarly, I can fill values based on this particular condition that if I have any values, then fill it with zero. I then next is filling missing values with mean so a little bit of change, it is actually not mean, I change it to median. So this is essentially what it will do here is that it will replace the n values with the median of the age. The next thing that I have over here is filling missing values with the last present value. So when you have this method as f fill, it essentially ensures that it fills the chosen column having n a values with the last present value. So here is an example out of it. So I have a column age, so I'm essentially saying that I'm dropping based on a single column. Then I have used this to fill any values in age. Interestingly, my age, uh, in, in, in my data frame, the age does not have any NA values. Next, uh, I'm, I'm replacing the NA values in age with median. And then I have a column which is called hourly rate. I'm saying that if there are any values, then fill it with the last present value. So this is the quick reference how you can fill the NA values or you how you can treat the missing values. Okay, next we have aggregation or aggregate how to how you can aggregate data. So in if you are aggregating by column, this is how it is profit age aggregating by profit and I'm saying sum it up aggregating by age. I'm saying mean you can group each column separately so you can primarily take the column profit and then you can aggregate age on mean here on the max values and score on the mean. Okay, let's take an example. So in this particular example, I the first thing that I've done here is that I have dropped name and gender. The second thing is that I've taken this particular columns and I've ensured they're all integers. After that, I have done aggregation by column profit and age. Next thing that I've done here is that I've taken column profit and aggregated age on mean, year on max year, and score on mean. So each of these values, score is on mean for group on the profit value of 50,000. Year has been the max year uh, when we have chosen the profit value of 50,000. And then uh, what I have done over here is that 
mean I take uh, for the age. So essentially here there are five values only, so nothing really gets changed. All that we have got over here is that we've got profit and we have got age here, score, grouped. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to sort the values. So I'm going to take, I can, I can take a column name. I can say ascending equal to true, that is, it will start from the smallest value and go to the highest value. Or I can actually take ascending equal, or I can make ascending equal to false, which means that it will go from the largest to the smallest value. Now what I've done over here is that I've taken the column profit and I've said that sort on profit and ascending is false. So you can see here over here, 75,000, which is the highest value, 250,000, which is the lowest value. Okay, next you can actually sort by multiple columns. You can put column A, column B, and you can sort on that. And you can give ascending equal to true for one, ascending equal to false for the other. Then you can actually sort by index. So this is where you can sort by index. You can give ascending is true. Next, we have column transformations. So in column transformations, what you can ideally do is that you can you can change the complete values to absolute value. You can change the values to uppercase, lowercase function can be used. So in my first scenario, it has to be an int because I am doing an integer, or I would not say only integer, but a numeric operation. So it has to be a numeric column. The second one, when we talk about uppercase, and the third one, when we talk about lowercase, we are actually talking about string operations. So both the columns have to be in string or object. The next is applying a function. So what I'm trying to do over here is that I'm doing a numeric manipulation. So ideally, my column type has to be integer or float or numeric in nature. So next, I'm doing a df.head5. So actually, essentially getting my existing data frame. Now, next thing is that I'm running this four operations of changing my age to absolute value, name to uppercase, gender to lowercase, and hourly rate, I'm doing, I'm multiplying it by two. Okay. Now, if I take name, name has two parts, first name and the last name. So name has got two parts, first name and the last name. The first name has starts with a uppercase, and same is the last name, which starts with an uppercase. Now, if I go to gender, it starts with an uppercase. And if you go to hourly rate, this is numbers. All that I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to multiply it by two. Now, let's see the result. Okay, so what I've done over here is that I've made age absolute. So there is no change because none of the age were in decimals or, or, or had any or were flowed. So next is uppercase name. So all or the, or the whole name is uppercase. Next, we have gender. Gender, everything is now in smaller case. And then we have the hourly rate, which actually is doubled. Okay, so this is an example what I have shown primarily for column transformation. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to item number seven, which is selecting and indexing. Suppose you are selecting a subset of columns. This is as simple as this. You put a DF and you write the name of the columns. Next, you can select every another row. Here I am saying, I using iLock, I am actually calling the third. The last one is Boolean indexing. So here, I if I want to get data into a data frame, which essentially, where essentially the name is Ellis Smith, this is how I do. Okay, so with this, we have just completed the quick reference cheat sheet for pandas. Do not forget to go to this particular location where you have the pre-code to download this notebook. Okay, thank you so much.